am Julie Steele with O'Reilly Media, and I'm here talking with Claudia Perlick, who is the chief scientist with Distillery. So, Claudia, you have a huge amount of experience with machine learning and predictive modeling for digital advertising, and I'm just curious, do you feel like most companies or digital companies are using machine learning well at this point, or is there still a way to go? I still think we are in the infancy of how far we can go. And it's not so much a matter of whether they are using advanced techniques or not, but a good understanding of what the optimal way of truly deriving value from all the data that they probably have. So they may have had historical um, segmentation algorithms that tell them types of audience and so on, but I think the next step to really fully embrace the granularity of data that is now easily available um, hasn't quite made it into the mainstream in, in digital companies yet. The other thing I would observe is there is uh, still a lot of historical attachment to metrics that might have been useful, but people underestimate actually how powerful some of these algorithms on the full complexity data can be at optimizing too much to a given metric, which may not be the right thing that you really want. Click is one of those examples that people have used for a long time. I still feel there's a lot of hesitation to move on because nobody really understands the kind of brave new world of post view conversions and attribution. So what people underestimate, how well I can predict Click if I really want to, but it just means that I'm finding people who have uh, eyesight problems, uh, not true interest in the product, just to give you an example. So do you think we need different metrics or fewer metrics? What is the solution to that change? I think it has to be a dialogue. It is primarily a different metric uh, solution, but I think it has to be a combination. You can't just look at one thing. In general, whether this is leading indicators or even historical data, just looking at single aggregates is typically not giving you enough of the picture to make good decisions. I think that's even true for metrics, and we may actually have to maintain different ones and look at them collectively to get a true understanding of what's going on. And how much of this is a tools issue? Is, are the tools still accessible to most companies, or it, does it depend on how much budget you have? Is it an enterprise thing? Or? Right. So on the tool side, there is the large investment in just the data collection and storage infrastructure. And I think this is where the real power of big data has been and make it, made it uh, take off over the last uh, four or five years. That has really become notably more affordable and possible. The analytics, the tools aren't the bottleneck from a financial perspective. Most of the algorithms are available in various implementations for free, as free runs on. The major component that people are struggling with is to be able to afford a good uh, data scientist who knows how to correctly use those tools on the data and in addition has the business understanding to have a meaningful conversation of whether what you're trying to do is correct or meaningful in the first place. And finding such a person and being able to keep them happily entertained in your company is quite a notable uh, budget component. Do you think that we'll see an easing in that hiring discipline as more and more universities have added machine learning and data science programs? Do you think we'll see more people coming into the field or what's the solution to that shortage? So, I, I see a notable increase in uh, data scientists. What I'm a little bit unsure about is how many of those really have the skill set that I would be looking for, mm -hmm. or whether it's more of a slight repositioning of a uh, resume that really is a computer scientist at heart or a statistician. Um, this being said, um, I do regularly uh, receive uh, requests from people who are looking for jobs in data science, so I think there is supply. Um, I think there's a mismatch problem, but I think also the demand will continue to be a buff supply. It may be hard to find one, but it's more of a matching problem really um, to be able to tell that you're actually interviewing a good data scientist. If you don't have one already, how do you know? You wouldn't even be able to tell that you're talking to one if you saw one. I think that's one of the bigger problems here. 
I've heard a, a bit about people in some fields, specifically physics, retraining to enter yeah. data science. And I'm curious about the human side of doing this, yeah. especially in advertising, which traditionally has a mixed reputation. Like, for what do you think about taking people with a humanities background, or how can we focus on that human side? So we have actually very collective. Group. Uh, my background is a PhD from a business school, which is not exactly obvious, uh, the pedigree of a data scientist. Um, we hired a PhD uh, from uh, Berkeley in statistics, um, but we also have a PhD in physics, and we have two more uh, excellent people who never actually got a PhD, and one is an MBA. Um, so the backgrounds are very diverse. When I'm interviewing people, I'm actually much more interested in, in that human component. Because I need somebody who is really, truly intellectually curious to figure things out. And I also want a certain level of skepticism. If you're not really good at asking yourself 10 times over whether that is correct, and that's where the intuitive part comes in. Usually you do some work and you look at it. It's not telling you whether it's right or wrong, but there are certain things that make my intuitive red flag go off and say, you know what? You may want to double check that. And that's a capacity that's uh, much more on the human level than really what your background is. The background, you have to have some technical knowledge, um, algorithms, a bit of computer science. You have to be able to do some amount of hacking. Not production strength, but you have to be able to achieve those. But um, the intuition in dealing with data and then talking actually to the business side and help them understand what their problem really is, that's much more important. I can teach them domain knowledge, that's not the issue. I can teach them some amount of data science or algorithms they don't know yet, it's okay too. But that's a huge part in that personal spectrum that I'm looking for. Can't teach curiosity. No, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking with me today, it's been a pleasure. My pleasure, thanks.